Welcome to the Central Innovation webinar on the topic How to Thrive During the Evolution of Manufacturing. I'm Julianne Reid from Central Innovation and I would like to welcome our expert panellists who will be presenting today to give you an insight into the changing and evolving world of manufacturing and how you can maximise your career opportunities. First we will hear from Kevin Dutois who is Faverly Transport's Engineering Manager. Then we will hear from Julian Spencer, who is the Solutions Manager at Central Innovation, who will talk about the skills you need to take you from good to great. And to finish today's webinar, we have Anna Ferreira, Recruitment Manager at Central Innovation, who will cover how to best present yourself to potential employees. Thank you again for joining us, and I will pass over to Kevin Dutois from Faverly Transport. Thanks, Kevin. Faverly Transport is a worldwide company. We have, as it says, 56 sites around the world, totaling almost 6,000 employees. We have recently merged with the WebTech company, which gives us a much greater coverage throughout the world and a very large presence through all, through all the continents around the world, both in freight and passenger transit uh, segments. In terms of engineering at Faverly globally, Faverly has worked towards the centralization of um, design uh, through centers of competency. These are mostly throughout Europe with some in Asia. So for a specific product range, we have dedicated design teams for that product range. We've also looked at moving a lot of manufacturing, especially the high volume manufacturing to low-cost countries, so for example China, India, uh, Eastern Europe. We've also seen, due to the complexity and large amounts of the projects that we run, is there's actually an increased need over the years for dedicated engineering project management, as some of these projects could take sev sev several years and across different, different countries and different companies. We do, however, have distribution and service centres worldwide, of which Australia is generally a service centre, looking after the local markets. And we're seeing a, a, lo a lot more that reliability is becoming more and more important. These rail components often are last, are, have shelf lives of 20 to 30 years, and the cost of retrofits or obsolete parts is um, quite, a, quite extensive. In terms of the engineering within Faverly, globally we hire mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, mostly for uh, specific component design. We have system design engineers which are responsible for the entire rail system and the integration to all the other segments. We have software engineers um, for, for all the electronic components. As I mentioned earlier, we have reliability engineers uh, really focusing on optimizing and extending the life of our, um, of our products. And then we have uh, manufacturing engineers, obviously optimizing our manufacturing processes. Application engineers working with the car builders, um, selecting the best products as well as in-field service. Um, we have quality engineers, uh, drafts, drafts people, um, and tech, technicians all involved across different organizations. In terms of Faverly Transport in Australia, we have approximately $42 million of sales with over 120 employees across five sites in Australia and New Zealand. And we generally specialize in brake components, uh, air conditioning, doors, and electronic passenger systems. Um, as I mentioned, we're across five sites. Uh, we have our head office in Sydney with workshops in Brisbane, Melbourne, Perth, and one in Wellington, New Zealand. In terms of the engineering at, in Faverly, Australia, we do design and have ownership over some Australian products. However, the majority of our products are designed in Europe generally by the international centers of competence, and we support those products 
that are installed on the Australian railway systems. Um, we provide a lot of repair, maintenance, and overhaul uh, work. Um, we also do a lot of engineering investigations. As mentioned previously, we have some quite large projects um, throughout Aus Australia with the large infrastructure development, especially in New South Wales. And we have a lot of manufacturing engineering and production engineering support for our operations here. And our engineers get quite involved in continuous improvement across product and processes. Now in terms of what I see in engineering in Australia and what I've learned um, coming into Australia, one of the big questions that comes up um, quite often is, is there a shortage of engineers in Australia or do we have too many? And this seems to differ depending on who you speak to, depending on the media, uh, government, government uh, media. In terms of, shortage of shortages of engineers, I found various things going on about how Australia requires more engineers and that's one of the, one of the pro pro professions that we need to get more degreed people through. Um, according to the University of New South Wales, the demand of engineers far degrees, far exceeds its supply of grad graduates. Um, <clears throat> we often see in the in the general media. Here's a couple of examples that I found um, that there's a new study that shows the depth of the engineering skills shortage, and this comes up time and time again in terms of how how we are sh how we are short of engineers and how do we how do we correct this deficit? On the other side, you see that we actually have a skill surplus of um, engineers. So this is out of the um, Australian government, the Department of Employment Statistics. Um, so in terms of New South Wales in particular, is that mechanical engineers and electrical engineers have actually been taken off the skills, um, skills shortage list with only civil engineers on the on the skills uh, skills short shortage list and again we see a lot of media this example is out of the Sydney Morning Herald on the 1st of January this year going on about how we are importing engineers from Australia as the Australian engineers struggle to find jobs and out of the same article we see a a graph tracking the um, engineering skills over the, over the last 10 years. Um, and as we see in, in the blue from 2007, 2008 up to 2012, 2013, there was a, there was a, sh a shortage of engineers. But how are we seeing in the last four years, according to this graph, of um, there being no shortage of engineers. So we're getting this conflicting information and we see it quite often that there's a skills shortage. However, I think a lot of people are seeing in real life that there is a surplus of engineers look, looking for, for positions within. Um, I found some more information in terms of engineering vacancies, um, this time from Engineers Australia from June last year. And again, we see in the in the red line showing over the last ten years the amount of engineering vacancies, and we can see from 2007, 2008 up until 2012, maybe there was a shortage of engineers um, with high demand, and in about 2013, 2014, we're seeing this slowdown of positions available for engineers within Australia. However, the last year seems to be increasing and there seems to be more demand for engineers. However, interestingly, it seems to be tracking quite consistently the overall vacancies within New South Wales. Um, so I wouldn't say that engineering is in demand. I think it's tracking 
um, the overall vacant the overall vacancies and job prospects within New South Wales. <clears throat> Moving on to again through Engineers Australia is um, information tracking by discipline, and in red we see the definitely the last few years um, civil engineering taking off as um, really in demand with mechanical engineering behind that. And in orange we're seeing mining engineering being the lowest as expected. Um, so in terms of engineering in Australia generally, um, we're seeing um, the skills shortage or the surplus of engineers depending on your point of view. We are seeing a decline in manufacturing engineering, uh, the manufacturing industry, as well as the decline of, of mining, which I think is pretty well publicized. However, on the, on the other side, I think we're seeing a lot of very efficient companies um, coming out of it, and the use of lean manufacturing to really um, cut down the costs and be able to carry on manufacturing within Australia with the high high cost of living and high labor rates. We're also seeing the increase of high technology and very niche industries um, coming out. And we're also seeing a lot of systems design and project management coming to the fore. Um, so a lot of the times we're seeing manufacturing being done offshore um, in Asia or, or India, but a lot of the design work um, and project management still done from Australia. Um, and we're also seeing an increased need in assurance. So in terms of um, there's a lot more documentation required and a lot more scope of work documentation, etc., cetera, um, that is still being generated within Australia. <clears throat> in terms of my personal experience, um, I believe we are seeing a large surplus of engineers available. Um, especially ones that have graduated overseas, um, and a lot of engineers that are seeking sponsorship to enter Australia. Um, but I think it is quite hard to fill vacancies as the experience doesn't always match um, exactly what the requirements are in Australia. Um, and quite often employees actually, employers uh, greatly value Australian work experience. Um, so a lot of previous international work experience isn't count, counted. Um, we are seeing that I believe manufacturing jobs are quite hard to come by, um, as we are seeing the decline of manufacturing to a certain extent. Um, but we are seeing civil engineering take off. Um, but I think generally there's fewer vacancies for engineers. In terms of changes in engineering in Australia generally, um, as I said, we've seen mining and manufacturing operations decreasing over the last five years. I believe there's a general decrease in the demand for engineers. And from that, we're seeing the salaries of engineers stagnate or decrease. Um, we are seeing a lot more demand for greater levels of documentation. Um, in terms of WHS, risk assessments, um, the documents before a project begins, so all the scope of work documents, the project management documentation, and the assurance of how we do, do the work. We're also seeing greater requirement for competency management and how companies ensure competent staff are undergoing engineering work. And we're also seeing great greater increase in the demand for qualifications to be verified by Engineers Australia um, for engineers who hold overseas degrees. So being able to standardize the engineering accreditations of engineers working in Australia. Leading on from that, um, the future of engineering in Australia. Um, this is my personal opinion. Um, I believe food and fast-moving consumer goods manufacturing will will definitely continue and probably increase over the next five to ten years, although it may be a lot more automated even than it is now. 
um, and it will require a lot of manufacturing and software engineers to to optimize these processes. Um, I definitely think the service industry in Australia will definitely continue. Um, so we'll definitely see uh, more general engineering, me mechanical, electrical, manufacturing, project managers, um, but especially reliability engineers and mechatronics engineers looking after that service industry. Um, and as mentioned previously, I think system engineering and project management will definitely carry on with design and system engineering and documentation being done in Australia with manufacture or project execution happening offshore. Um, and I think high tech companies, uh, autos aerospace, automotive to a certain extent, um, medical defense will definitely carry on um, in Australia. I think there's still demand for that. And I think that engineering will probably, over the coming years, become more and more specialized. So, for example, if we have um, somebody coming out with a me mechanical engineering degree, um, they will need to specialize in a specific field um, and gain experience in that. Um, I don't think we will have too many very generalist uh, engineering roles in the future. I think it will become a lot more um, specialized as time goes on. And that is my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Hi, my name is Julian Spencer. I'd like to thank Kevin for his presentation. Uh, it's an excellent uh, account of uh, a very good business in Australia and worldwide. And, and does lead into some of the discussion topics that I'll be talking about today. Uh, as I said, my name is Julian Spencer. I run the solutions team at Intercad, which is part of Central Innovation. A lot of you may know us as Intercad. Uh, we've been a SolidWorks provider for over 25 years. Uh, but in that 25 years, we've uh, grown a wealth of knowledge about not just 3D CAD, but also uh, a, a wide variety of solutions that are available uh, to the engineers and businesses today. Uh, this knowledge and experience has you know, resulted in our clients asking for um, more power in what they do, more capability, more automation. Uh, and uh, as an industry leader in this area, we've sought out new tools uh, and new capabilities to be able to assist them in this process. I think as you as candidates for positions or potential positions in Australia, it's important to understand how companies are diversifying, how companies are improving their businesses through software, uh, through solutions, so that you can be better equipped to uh, uh, go for that, uh, that, all, uh, that, that job that you're searching. Okay, so what's interesting about uh, what we've learned is that we are heading into a new industrial revolution. Uh, the industrial revolution has basically gone through several cycles over the years, as you can see by the graph on the right-hand side. Uh, the first obviously being you know, steam power and then moving on to efficiencies with electronics and such like. The new industry revolution is called Industry 4.0. Uh, and uh, it's a very interesting uh, sector of uh, engineering, um, and I think it's something that has just started, but something that we all need to be aware of as businesses drive towards becoming Industry 4.0 proficient. Uh, Central Innovation, or Intercad, uh, we believe is your go-to uh, go uh, uh, place to find information about uh, Industry 4.0 and also solutions and software to assist in proficiencies in this area. So let's talk a little bit more about Industry 4.0. Industry 4.0 is taking what are uh, traditional methods of uh, engineering or traditional, method, traditional methods of design and sort of um, either uh, changing those to be more modern or collaborating those so that they become um, uh, more accessible. 
And this has happened through you know, the digital design collaboration process where people can design in different locations or construct in different locations. They can go through an online testing procedure via uh, software and services. Uh, they may have a, a distributed workflow such that something may be designed in one location uh, and as Kevin said, often manufactured in another. And um, moving even further for, forward into the future, there is going to be a trend or you'll start to see a trend towards uh, limited uh, bespoke manufacturing. Uh, what I mean by there is that um, the additive manufacturing or 3D printing industry is very quickly coming up to speed with availability to print ready for, manuf you know, ready for, uh, for manufacture also ready for, for use components uh, such that you can run limited quantities uh, on the location where the item is going to be used. If you take that into consideration with uh, designing you know, from different locations, uh, testing online, uh, the ability for people to be able to uh, have items uh, manufactured uh, for purpose in small quantities at um, a very competitive costs is going to is going to become quite uh, interesting. It's going to change. Um, as uh, we heard before, there is still a current trend towards getting uh, bulk manufacturing done in countries where the uh, the labour costs are cheaper, such as China. Uh, but as the price of additive manufacturing uh, reduces, you will see a trend change towards people being able to do things more locally. So Industry 4.0 is something that you need to become familiar with as uh, people looking for positions. Uh, understand what's involved in the, uh, the process and become upskilled in an area that, uh, that uh, will benefit you. So what should you learn? Um, I think the, the important things to do is to broaden your skill base. Uh, as Kevin mentioned earlier, uh, the generalised engineer uh, is no longer going to be the engineer of choice for many manufacturing companies, many design companies. They're looking for people who have a skill base uh, that is going to be higher than that. So one of the obvious and the first on my list here is simulation uh, or computer-aided uh, FEA, finite element analysis, um, whereby you are looking to analyse the strength, stress of a, um, of a product uh, through its design process rather than uh, as a mechanical test at the end of the process. Um, within the product suites that uh, we sell, um, obviously SolidWorks has several simulation products. Uh, there's Simulation Standard, Simulation Professional, Simulation Premium and Simulation Flow. So this goes through stress, strain, displacementcy, frequency, buckling, thermal, uh, so there are many areas that you can learn um, alongside your 3D CAD to, uh, to gain some skills there. Moving uh, across, we have technical communication. Um, this was also mentioned quite heavily by Kevin and something that is becoming um, a huge advantage to, to employees to have a skill set in. Um, the technical communication is um, moving in two directions. Obviously we have our common paper-based technical communication, but we also are having now much more online-based uh, technical communication. Again, SolidWorks uh, provides um, tools to assist in this area and, and ones that you can learn. Uh, the most common being the SolidWorks Composer product, which is a specific uh, technical communications and documents uh, tool. Uh, works independently of the SolidWorks program, so um, can be used independently by someone who has uh, uh, skills in that area and doesn't actually necessarily need to be an engineer, or it can be an engineer who wishes to pursue an extra skill base. Another one that's um, a little bit uh, left to centre but is also MDB from SolidWorks. MDB is um, allowing um, customers and clients to move away from traditional paper-based um, technical drawings and more model-based technical uh, uh, information where you have a model with all the technical details to go to manufacture, which again allows for ability to um, 
have manufacturing overseas if required, uh, or in different locations, or direct to um, um, additive manufacturing solutions. Moving across to product data management, um, this is a very big one. Uh, this is an area where uh, I personally have spent a lot of time and effort, and, and currently run uh, a team at Central Innovation Indicat to, to assist. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest, if not the single biggest area we've seen of uh, skill increase. Um, most companies these days um, are trying to uh, become ISO 9000 or above compliant. Um, most companies are looking to retain as much information they can um, on history of their products so that they can ensure uh, they can return to previous builds or revisions of, uh, of products to, uh, to ensure uh, you know, uh, keeping things up, uh, uh, online working or in the, in the consumer uh, workplace happening. So being able to replace parts, being able to rebuild as desired from a previous, uh, previous design. So data management uh, is something that is also available in the uh, SOLIDWORKS 3D CAD suite of tools through either PDM Standard or PDM Professional. Um, it can allow for multi-site, uh, which means that you can have uh, the same set of data being viewed and worked on across not only uh, other offices in Australia and New Zealand, but right across the world. One of our clients has over 17 sites worldwide, all using a data management solution, PDM Professional. So certainly an area that I would consider greatly to look into if you want to upskill this. Lastly is another area of, uh, of uh, great interest, which is automation. Um, as we look at the cost of manufacture and cost of design, uh, we realise that um, um, the highest cost we have is labour. So if we can uh, automate uh, processes through higher skills in our staff and uh, more sophisticated and uh, uh, better software, uh, we are going to become more competitive and that would mean that we no longer need to uh, you know, rely on uh, uh, going to China for manufacturing. Uh, we have cases in Australia of companies that are, are producing sheet metal, for instance, and uh, through uh, automation, and um, very competitive design processes, they're actually able to produce and manufacture um, around about 20% cheaper than China, uh, and subsequently winning, winning a lot of business. So automation is a, an excellent one to pursue. Uh, and uh, there are several tools available um, from uh, ourselves, Central Innovation and third party. So one that uh, some people may know of is a product called DriveWorks, which allows for the ability to take um, designs that are similar but different. Uh, if we take something like a trailer, we may have a box trailer, we may have a camper trailer, we may have a boat trailer. They're all trailers, but they're different for different purposes. So how can we automate the system such that someone can put in simple inputs um, and have a different design uh, become available? Uh, the DriveWorks product is uh, extremely powerful in that area and one widely used by those types of industries. Uh, Sharp Task uh, is um, tools that uh, are available from Central Innovation, which automate some of the common uh, functions and, and features you may uh, do within your just general solid works engineering. Um, areas that are certainly worth looking at uh, to uh, make uh, work faster and more efficient for you. And, and lastly, obviously, um, the solutions team at Central Innovation works at uh, designing bespoke um, implementations of automation and uh, data management to ensure people are uh, you know, working uh, as efficiently as possible, uh, linking systems together such as ERP, um, asset management uh, and the like to, uh, to, uh, to ensure again a competitiveness in the, in the marketplace. And, and learning these skills is something that is, is, is very powerful for you as, uh, as clients. A case in point, which I thought I'd, I'd bring up a couple, um, which give you a good understanding of how uh, um, you know, having those extra skills in hand will get you jobs. Um, ANSTO, Australian, Australian Nuclear Sciences, uh, has used SOLIDWORKS for over 10 years. Um, they've produced literally hundreds of thousands of files, with their general assembly being over 148,000 parts. 
Um, you know, this required really um, you know, a, a very important and easy way to, to uh, uh, access all these files. Um, and, and more importantly than that, um, ANSTO as an organisation decided to use a proprietary um, bespoke um, asset management solution as their main tool of being able to view these files. So you know, we as an organisation uh, assisted them by pre presenting SOLIDWORKS PDM and also a, uh, a specialised uh, functionality to have the data from PDM lead into that asset management solution. Um, the result was that um, you know, people were able to get the right information at the right time um, um, you know, through the uh, uh, proprietary asset management system that ANSO had. Um, an, an excellent result. But what does that mean for you as people that are potentially are going for a job? If you have ability with SOLIDWORKS and you also have skills with data management, PDM, your chances of getting employed at, uh, at this part, uh, location is going to be much, much higher. So uh, having basic um, uh, solid modeling skills uh, with 3D mechanical CAD uh, will only take you so far. People have moved into an era or companies have moved into an era of using these more uh, specialized tools. Uh, and you having those, uh, uh, the ability to know those tools is, is, is powerful. So you really need to look at where are you? Where, where are you on this list, on this sort of escalating good to great list? Where do you sit? Well, a lot of people sit here. A lot of people sit with 3D uh, CAD knowledge, SOLIDWORKS uh, or other 3D tools. Um, and when we move into an area where you know, there are quite a few more people that um, potentially have um, skills in simulation or technical communication. Those are the most common skill sets we see out there. But what we're really looking for um, in our workforce today is people that are uh, involved in data management and people who are looking at skill sets that put them in an industry 4.0 um, marketplace because that's where the work that's where our companies in Australia are heading uh, large and small they're all looking to uh, enhance the performance of their companies by bringing on board the solutions and technologies that are going to take them into that new era um, they're looking at a skilled base and they're looking for um, re you know, um, recruitment of people who understand these new technologies so very important that if you want to be on board that you're looking, getting yourself up into that high level of, uh, of, uh, of category. So the learning challenge is, is you know, how do we get these skills? Um, you know, um, traditional methods of training in, in many cases are not working. Um, you know, uh, we've done a, a lot of research um, over the last uh, couple of years with our bases asking them how can we assist and, and where can central innovation indicate assist in ensuring that the, uh, the skills are available there to be learnt um, by people seeking jobs um, such that they can get the, the level of uh, engineering skills that they want for the uh, for their employees so we've we've done this in uh, a couple of, uh, of methods we still have the classic classroom training and with some companies, they're very happy for you to take time out of uh, you know, business time to go and, uh, and sit those courses, and there are many of them. Um, we've also now, though, added online classrooms, which means that you still have a, uh, a qualified uh, instructor or teacher uh, you know, teaching you the, uh, the, the courses, but you're doing it in, a, in an environment where you're working out of your own location. Um, you're not having to travel to, um, which in this day and age in cities like Sydney is very hard, uh, to, to go to a classroom, um, and you're still able to ask the questions and have that one-on-one uh, -on -one interface with a, with a teacher if, if need be. Uh, next we have um, self-paced online training, uh, a very, very popular one. Uh, here you can learn the skills that you believe you need to, to get involved with, but do it in your own time so you're not um, uh, uh, eating into into work time necessarily, um, or you can do it in uh, times of uh, quiet periods within work, so that you're upskilling to maximise uh, your abilities, uh, but not doing it in uh, high priority work, work time. So the self-paced online is, is is very very popular. Lastly, um, obviously we uh, we work towards providing uh, customers bespoke training. 
Uh, a lot of the subject matter that we've talked about today is quite specialised. Um, sometimes the solutions that are provided for businesses are actually bespoke solutions for that business to make them unique in the marketplace, uh, to link particular pieces of software together. Um, and the CI, uh, Central Innovation uh, Intercat Solutions team and training team are there to ensure that we can provide the bespoke and specific training uh, for that. So the skills you can learn can either be done uh, through addressing, you know, improving your skill set through your company or, or content, contacting us directly and, uh, and seeing if uh, uh, one of the courses that we provide can, can suit your needs. So why come to us? Um, you know, obviously there are a lot of training institutions out there. Um, I think it's very important to understand that um, Central Innovation um, is quite unique in the marketplace. Um, we've been involved in um, 3D solid modelling. In fact, we were the company that brought 3D solid modelling to this country um, back in the uh, early 80s. Um, and you know, we have uh, literally hundreds of um, engineers um, you know, uh, in our um, business and subsequently you know, there's many, many years of experience that we can, um, we can give you. We deal with a very, very, very wide diversity of companies doing an extremely wide uh, range of products from um, you know, rockets being launched into space uh, to high performance um, motor vehicles being raced on, uh, on racetracks um, to um, you know, racing yachts, um, you know, right down to all sorts of uh, everyday products such as uh, you know, Sunbeam, Jugs, Breville um, and the like. So, um, by um, coming to us, you have the insurance of being provided with uh, a skill set of very, very high quality, high end software. Um, you have multiple ways to be taught in those solutions and you have uh, engineers and trainers that uh, have a, a very wide variety of experience for you. So, from good to great. You know, greatness is not a function of circumstance. Greatness, it turns out, is largely a matter of conscious choice and discipline. Uh, and that's, this is a, a very, very true comment. You know, you really have to make the effort uh, to figure out how you want to put yourself above the crowd. You have to know what you're going to do to do that, and you need to pursue it and do it. Um, we, you know, we find we talk to clients. Um, very often, and, and they're looking for specialist engineers, and they're looking for people to fit certain uh, tasks or requirements for, for a job, um, and there's difficulty in finding those people. Uh, so, you know, you as people who are potentially looking for work or looking to increase, uh, you know, your possibility of earnings and all those sorts of things, you have to make the choice. You have to be the one that uh, addresses how you go about uh, finding that, uh, that new skill, and uh, we're here to help you. So lastly, I'd like to put you through a, another case study, uh, just again to, to emphasise how important having these extra skills are. Uh, Mineral Technologies, based up in Queensland, uh, is a company that, uh, again, is a, a global company, um, a bit like uh, Favely and, uh, and Kevin's company. Um, they supply uh, items for the mining industry uh, and they supply it worldwide. Um, their requirement um, and how we got involved, uh, apart from providing them with um, you know, 3D solid modelling and simulation and other tools, was to find a way to ensure that they could have the world access their information very, very easily um, without them having to call up Australia in, in Queensland business hours. Um, we did that uh, by um, providing a um, solution based around, again, the SolidWorks PDM. Um, but giving web access to uh, the world through um, uh, logins that uh, ensured that uh, the people coming in had uh, only specific, asset, as, uh, specific access to specific tools, and, uh, uh, but gave them access uh, 24 hours a day from anywhere in the world. So again, sort of uh, looking at how that uh, uh, resulted for them, um, it, it provided them with a $35,000 a month benefit uh, by providing that 24-hour access, so a, a massive uh, you know, profit uh, uh, for the increase for the, for the business and, and, and something that they were very excited about. And of course, um, staff requirements um, you know, really uh, need to 
um, ensure that they have people who understand data management PDM skills. So very much uh, uh, you can understand how having that extra skill sets will, will help you out. So that's um, my presentation uh, for today. Um, I'd like to thank you for, for listening um, and I'm now going to hand over to Anna Fleury. Good afternoon, my name is Anna Ferreira, I'm the Recruitment Manager of the Recruitment Division at Centre Innovation. Thank you for attending this uh, webinar. So today we'll be uh, talking about the skills that uh, candidates need to have to uh, answer market demands and also give you a bit of an overview of uh, our division and uh, what we can do to assist you. Some statistics, I'll be very brief on that because my colleague Julian and also Kevin have already spoke about some statistics of employment uh, and skills in Australia. So what we notice here is a employment of only 16% in uh, the age group of 15 to 24 years old and then uh, 45 years old and plus 45% of the workforce. It's regional and cities with, with obviously Sydney, Melbourne, not so much uh, Queensland, but the, the two capitals with the most jobs. And then we see a slight increase in regional areas uh, due to uh, agriculture, business, farm equipment, machinery, processing equipment being in, uh, in high demand. In New Zealand, the situation uh, at the moment is good for uh, employment, but the lack of uh, specialised skills is you know, is quite a problem for, for companies in New Zealand where before, you know, the workforce was with occupations that didn't require uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, skills. Now they, they have a demand for managers, engineer professionals, uh, so people with a lot more studies and, and training. We expect that it will uh, continue to be stable up to 2019 and uh, with an increase in, in areas of high tech, uh, so um, research and development, uh, defense, some transport uh, and other professions that don't relate to to, to us in this uh, in this webinar so much, but the construction industry is quite quite strong. The same in Australia. So any any jobs that um, will uh, require engineers as well for the construction in industry for structural engineers etc. is in is in demand. We I just spoke with the with the growth areas. So there's a lot of automation in in the high tech uh, sector. So things like robotics, artificial intelligence, materials handling equipment being more automated in the food processing machinery uh, as well. So in all the industries uh, where you can apply uh, automation and robotics, you're going to see a great demand for, in, in, uh, for those skills. Defence, rail, shipbuilding, uh, medical instrumentation and research are areas that are solid at the moment, a, a decline in the traditional manufacturing. So basically where skills uh, in the manufacturing uh, or tasks are very repetitive, uh, those things uh, either are replaced by new technologies or uh, they are manufactured offshore because of in, in low-cost countries. I leave uh, this to you to do a little bit of uh, research, uh, architecting what that means and what it will mean for, uh, for your particular skills, how it translates and, and add value to the skills that you already have, what can you do to, to upgrade your skills, 
uh, you can do some research. There's a lot of articles uh, in the internet in, in regards to, uh, to those skills. You can uh, have a look, talk also to industry experts, to our people at Centre Innovation who do training in, in that areas because, uh, you know, uh, our, our software touches and, and assists uh, engineers in that in that area designing the same thing how how do you understand uh, the, the skills in in your particular field field and uh, how you become more productive and uh, analyzing uh, so applying uh, analytics in order to make uh, predictions for uh, for the future in the way you're going to design and what impact it, it's going to have business and, and most areas of business uh, in Australia will, will have to, to, to do that in order to be competitive. They have to uh, look at themselves, how they uh, how the processes are working uh, and, and ask themselves a few questions. Um, it's very known that uh, in the last decade or the last two decades, uh, the companies that were at the forefront of technology and uh, start uh, revamping their uh, presence on the internet and uh, compete uh, with other companies uh, offshore uh, have made it through and uh, successfully and others uh, have a lot more problems because where they were the maybe they only had a few competitors in in their field they suddenly got faced with you know uh, a global uh, you know a, a lot of uh, a lot of companies globally competing with the same offers of of products and you really need to to think in in that way some guidelines now going uh, back to uh, what expertise we uh, we have and uh, what we can do to assist our candidate. We certainly try to, uh, because we work at, across Australia and New Zealand uh, and we source also people from uh, overseas, uh, we can do an exchange, uh, for example, in the area of contract uh, of candidates that we can propose to other states or can do an exchange between New Zealand and, and Australia for a period of time. Uh, this allows, you know, candidates to uh, continue working while they're looking for an opportunity uh, in the location that uh, uh, they want. Obviously, this is not for everybody. If you have, you know, strong commitments with family and children, it may be difficult to do, but uh, not impossible. And uh, we have been doing that quite successfully with a number of uh, of candidates, namely uh, people that are working uh, in in the mining sector or in the automotive uh, sector that we could. Uh, train and, and help with some of some of their skills and then uh, propose uh, other options uh, on a contract. It could be three months, six months. Uh, they can uh, go to New Zealand, they can go to uh, another state and, and we working with them at the same time uh, to try to find a more um, uh, permanent position uh, in, in the town they, uh, they, of their preference. So, the location of the of their preference. Uh, so we consider, uh, even though the you know the clients are uh, the people that uh, give us uh, the positions to fill, and are our clients, we consider all our applicants uh, our clients, and um, we want to ensure that. Uh, their skills are adequate, they, uh, they're going to be successful uh, when they apply or go for interviews uh, because if we match their skills to what the client wants then it's, you know, everybody uh, is a winner there and we get repeat business, the client is happy, 
the candidate is is happy and do a better a better job. So, if we don't find the right person, uh, we will tell the client, look, uh, at the moment this we we can't find. You have to give us a little bit more time, or you have to compromise uh, either with training the person or really see what is critical for for what you need to do. Obviously, uh, uh, the use of the software, we are specialists, so we have hundreds of, would not say thousands of candidates in our books in all uh, industries and with all skills. We have the assistance of our engineers. We do tests to our candidates to determine the level of skills that they have. Uh, this stays with us unless we get permission from the candidate to uh, uh, to present the, the skill test to, to, to the client. Uh, it's really a self-evaluation. So, uh, guidelines very quickly on a resume. Uh, most of you know how to present resumes, so uh, the first page is the important page and is what a, a busy manager will look at. Uh, it needs to have enough concise information uh, about your skills. Um, so uh, obviously a very a very short uh, synopsis of uh, um, your your uh, your skills. Uh, and be very concrete if you if you say that uh, you are an excellent designer that doesn't mean much you need to say why or give a very quick example of uh, where your your skills um, you know uh, achieve you know uh, results you know finish a project earlier uh, you had additional skills that were a bonus for the company so a, f a few things not too long uh, some major achievements and then uh, a career summary um, with a few bullet points uh, maybe the last probably uh, five or, or ten jobs. Um, that's what the, the jobs that were uh, that relate uh, to the to the position that you are applying for. And finally, uh, your education, personal details. If you want to, you don't have to. Uh, it's entirely up to you if you want to put that you, you know, you you have a family. Uh, it could be uh, important for for a manager, but if you don't want to, you don't have to. Uh, we can, you know, uh, give those details if you if you allow us to. Uh, so very, that's very brief. It should be to the point, uh, and and then you you continue with details. Obviously, if you have more than 10 years in Korea, you're not going to be able to, to put your details in two pages. Uh, and in particular, if you have been doing product development and you have a few projects you want to outline, so extend a little bit, there is no problem as long as it's reasonable, you know, we don't we don't want 20 page you know, in a resume, but um, you know, it, it give a little bit of, of, of detail. Uh, things to exclude from a professional resume, obviously bad grammar, uh, check spell, uh, that's obvious. Uh, exclude any salary history. Uh, that's, you know, to, to, to be an interview and, and most people will only ask what your last salary was. If they ask, typically they will ask that to the recruiter if uh, we have that information. Uh, references, do not put your references in your CV. Uh, you can give your references, take them with you, you know, have them prepared. Um, 
you know who who can be called that you have uh, uh, you have their permission to to be a reference don't put them on their CV um, you could go for an interview and then don't have a follow up or you, you you don't want people before they see you to start you know ringing your references uh, the reason for leaving the the position shouldn't be on the resume either unless it's you move countries, you move states, you know, relocation, uh, otherwise it, it, it shouldn't be there. That's something for the, uh, for the interview again. Um, maybe if you have, if you've been contracting and you have a mix of permanent jobs and contract and you have the last three, you know, short contracts, maybe put in brackets contract. Uh, so anything uh, that you you would ask the question if you were interviewing somebody should be should be there. Uh, also, if you uh, your resume has been prepared uh, by somebody else, you seek assistance of of a profi professional to write resumes, and uh, we help a, a number of our candidates with with that. Uh, make sure that it 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 is in in written as if you were writing uh, your writing your your resume not not a third person um, so that's the skills for your resume now when you apply for jobs obviously most important is that you have in your mind uh, clearly uh, your your career path what you want to do where you want to go uh, your areas of interest. Once you have done that, uh, then obviously you work backwards. It's not always possible to do it, to do exactly uh, your or, or, or get exactly your your dream job. Uh, but it should be always with that in mind. And if you if you go for a, a position that might get you there, you should be a bit open mind and say, okay, well, what what are the opportunities in this company? Uh, I haven't worked in that field as much. I'm moving industries. Uh, if I take this, this position, would that get me, you know, to the position I want? And that's something that you can discuss with us. We typically have that information from, from the client. We know our clients, we know the company, uh, and we will tell you if, if it's a position uh, that has no career advance, advancement, and that's you know, very often the case. You, you're hired to, to do a particular job, and uh, that's what it is, and others will, will offer you uh, by the nature of the, the, the position, you know, uh, promotion and or moving into a, di a different area. Uh, be selective, focus, don't send your CV uh, to everybody. Uh, that's not a good policy and, and we understand, you know, people that do it. Uh, you know, they uh, get a bit uh, desperate, you know, they're not working, they want to find work, either the, their company uh, has, you know, closed down or they come from overseas or whatever the reason is, um, you know, you have a, a time pressure to find a job. Um, be still selective. There's nothing worse than, you know, we're talking to candidates, they have no idea which jobs they have applied for uh, and they apply to, you know, 10 jobs, all different uh, and, and, and that is not good because, you know, Australia, it, it, it's a great, uh, a, a big continent but it's a small place and, and managers will uh, eventually come across your CV more than once and uh, it is psychological. They also will, you know, I've seen, I've seen this profile before. Uh, it's, it's just not a good thing. So uh, selection, selective is, is a good thing. Um, you know, be flexible. Uh, we put there some uh, uh, job tips on what to wear, and I apologize, the photograph is not that clear, but uh, 
uh, depending on your audience, we can give you a bit of information, uh, you know, uh, as, as long as it, it is, you know, no, no um, really bright colours, certainly not in engineering, uh, a little bit more, um, a little bit more formal. Uh, you don't have always to have a, a suit and tie, you know, but a jacket and pants and, you know, uh, will be adequate. Um, and again, some questions that you can have a look after in our presentation uh, for interviews that you should prepare yourself and there's uh, a lot of information again uh, on, the, on the internet. We typically do a run, you know, with the candidate if, uh, if you want to when we do an interview, uh, you know, if we notice some something that you should be aware when you uh, when you do your interview either your body language your the way you answer your questions you focus on 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 uh, answering the the questions um, we can help you on that and do a bit of training and uh, you know at the end of the day, we want you to be successful. And uh, uh, some of the people that work with us, you see their photographs here, Rebecca and Sarah, they've been uh, in recruiting for quite quite a while and uh, uh, they help uh, with the interview process. And that's it. If you have some questions, you can uh, send them by email or uh, call us. We'd we'll be very happy to to answer your questions. And thank you again. And have a good afternoon. Afternoon. <laughs>